a little further down the road from our last camp on the way to Emerald going past a little town here called Dingo so I mean, you've got to have a dingo at Dingo anyway uh, there's some bloke uh, uh, Moses Wafter and I guess the town didn't exist back there because he was camped there and uh, folklore says that uh, he was either visited by dingoes or the howling dingoes are in the background and he called the town Dingo so there you go Here's some of the typical loads that come along on the highway. 793, probably 150 ton uh, bucket there, the tub. Heading for black water. Where Still on our way to Emerald. We've been through Dingo and um, Blackwater, one of the uh, largest coal towns in Queensland there, I think it was. And uh, next little stop here, there was a, a dig tree to come and have a look in the little town of Comet. Um, there was some bloke, uh, Ludwig Wilhelm Frederick Leichhardt. And back in 1844, he named the river um, after a comet back in 1844 was sighted. So, uh, and then back in 1847, the dig tree was marked at the confluence of the Comet and the Nagoya River. Made it to Emerald, and uh, first stop, Information Centre, Emerald Information Centre. And what do you find at the Emerald Information Centre? Out in the paddock. Oh, can't see anything, can you? Guess what? Whoa. There it is there. It is um, the emerald giant Van Gogh sunflower painting. It is the largest painting in the world on an easel. And it is here in Emerald. So there you go. It was a lovely drive to Emerald. That's what it looks like in relation to me. So we're parked up at uh, Emerald, we're at this little spot, um, the Nagoa River. It's a, got a railway bridge on one side and a road bridge on the other. Yeah, it's a highway bridge and uh, it's going to be a little noisy at night, but hey, we slept next door to a railway that uh, had uh, trains going past every hour. So yeah, nice little spot at the Botanical Gardens at uh, Emerald. We're going for a quick stroll, go and get some supplies. Nice quiet night last night. No train. It's 10 o'clock, we're about to head to uh, Rubyville, Sapphireville, and we find that train. Mind you, I never heard a train last night, and that one's pretty quiet. We could have had it and not known. Yeah, we would have known. <laughs> How's it go? They'll never know. They're gonna know. As we were leaving Emerald, couldn't help but notice these large trucks carting what looked like huge bales of cotton wool. Um, onwards down the road, um, we started seeing all this white tufts of something all on the side of the road, all scattered down the road and um, yeah then we came across fields of um, cotton so we popped up the drone and uh, took these amazing shots
Left the town of Emerald this morning and uh, drove about 50 k's to the gem fields. Uh, we're just about to enter Sapphire. It's an angle of the uh, sculpture to the entrance of the gem fields and uh, it represents the sapphires, the rubies and the emeralds of the area. Righty ho! Yeah, we left uh, Emerald there. Had a little look around town before we left. Nice little place. And that uh, little free spot by the Botanical Gardens. Not too bad. A little bit of road noise. It finished up around about 10 o'clock and wasn't too, too bad at all. And we got that train through this morning. Uh, we travelled 50 k's to uh, Gem Seeker um, Holiday Park here in Ruby Vale. Um, quite tempted to stop on the way up and uh, look at uh, some of the little gem huts and things on the way but uh, determined to get ourselves here parked up and uh, comfortable and then uh, we'll go and do a little bit of exploring tomorrow maybe. So a great spot. Jude will be definitely in an element here. She's looking forward to doing the old um, gem trails. So we've tacked on the end here, a nice little spot there on the end for us and a uh, nice quiet park. Looks good. Looking forward to it. Just gotta love the bird bath. Let's see if we can zoom up. Little kookaburra. There he is. He's having a bird bath. Let's see how close we can get. I suppose this is very rare to catch the kookaburra having a bath. Are you hungry? We got, we got two little friends. Oh. They said, I don't want it now, it's dirty. Gonna come in closer. Wow, it's pretty lucky to have one kookaburra to feed, but two. I better be careful because you know what happens. You'll end up with three, four, and five. Just it on the floor. I don't know what he's doing. He's, he's either trying to break it up or sometimes they're insect, uh, sometimes they're instincts. Whether it's a, a fish or an insect, they tend to smash it on the log to kill it. You want something a little bit more little, do you? Oh, you are so tender. Yeah, gentle. Yeah, very gentle. Oh, how was that? <laughs> Aren't you such a sweet you wonder why you look so healthy, eh? To crouch down a little bit more so I can... That's better. That's good. What do you got there? Cookie one and cookie two. Yeah, cookie one and cookie two. Cookie two. And they're so gorgeous. They're not even, they don't even hurt to actually... They're very gentle. They have been so patient. They have been waiting there for at least 20 minutes. There you go. It's there, is it dunk, dead enough? Dunk. Oh, good one. I caught one of these having a bath. He's got that look. That was so funny, but he didn't. I don't think I got him on film. Where he is? Oh. oh, I told you. Guess what? I've got a protein little friend. Cookie three. Whoa, what a big mouth you got. Okay, I'm coming. Here it's interesting, he's got um like a bit of cotton on, on the end of his beak, but they're not even, they don't they're not even hurting when you feed them like Is that good? I tell you what though, that beak is designed for one thing and that is piercing things, it's prey or whatever. the most gorgeous little birdie. So friendly. You're a rainbow lorikeet. Yes you are. You gonna go back to your mate? I'll take you back to your little mate over here. 
Terry's given us some VIP Who's access. It? Oh, there's Mama. Yeah, Mama's coming out for feed. That's actually not Mama, because uh, the baby, when well, I was just having a look, um, the mother got killed on the road. Oh, poor thing. So there we go. An Aussie possum. An Aussie possum. Who is protected here in Australia. Very, very protected. Yeah. Look at you, you're beautiful. Oh, nice one, Terry. Come up good. Okay. Is it breakfast or dinner? <laughs> Today we're going to Miner's Cottage, Hosking, to see what we can find either emeralds, sapphires, or rubies. And apparently, it's within walking distance of here, according to the sign. Let's go. Quick stroll up the road, about 400 meters it was. Miner's Cottage, Fossicking Park. Terry from uh, the Gem Seekers Holiday Park suggested this one. Uh, yeah, no we have boss, beware of that. 25 bucks gets you a bag, a bucket, and away you go. Just note there that the last bucket sold will be at 12. And you can take bags home to uh, Fossick back at the motor park. And there's a few Fossickers. Okay, see that one? Yeah. That's a sapphire chip. Wow. Okay. Brilliant, we can go home now. Okay. <laughs> get to work. <laughs> right. So, so, why do I need to go to work? Look at you. You're doing quite well by yourself. <laughs> okay, so we get three types of gemstones here. Yeah. We get sapphires, which are blue, green, and yellow, yeah. or a combination there are thereof. If you get three in one, the three colours in one, it's called a party. P A R T I. Right, the other gemstone that we get here is called a zircon. Now, a zircon is different to a normal, to a sapphire, in that when you look at uh, a zircon, you can actually, it's semi transparent the stone. See how a sapphire, you can just see the colour on the surface? Yeah. Um, that's not a sapphire. What I might have to do is go down and get a get a sample bag for you just to show you the difference Oops. that one on the side of that, that one there that's it that's 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 a little zircon you're kidding me did i just find a zircon yeah. oh, see yeah. how you can see inside the stone yeah see it's transparent yeah right and the other one that we get is called spinel spinel is your pure black stone of uh shines like a sapphire uh it's matte black um, but it's a semi-precious stone. Okay, so that's the three. They go in there. Wow. Okay. Now, so what is it like? Oh, that's, yeah. Summer quartz. You, What's that one there? That's a sapphire. Wow. Yeah. All right. Now, when you're sure, when you're happy that there's no gemstones in here, that yep. goes in your black bin. Okay. When you're happy that there's no gemstones in here, that goes in your red bin. Okay. okay. Because... We're starting again. Look at that. Oh, that's ooh, beautiful. That's nice. Yeah. That's an emerald, I take it. Oh, sapphire. emerald? We don't get emeralds here. Don't you? Okay. Oh, sapphire. Sapphire. It's a sapphire, is it? Sapphire Sorry. blue. Emerald green. Yeah. Oh, do you? Yeah, green sapphire. Um, see? See? Oh, yeah. That's lovely. Right. Um, sapphires are, as I said before, are blue, green, and yellow. Right. Um, zircons of white, yellow, and red. So that's a zircon. Yeah. Yeah. Not looking too bad. Ooh. <coughs> Interesting one. That one. I'll explain that one to you later as I get to it. Oh, that's pretty. Okay, so what I'm doing is I'm sorting the stones mm. into what I believe we'll check later on for cutting. Cool. Uh, polishing. Ones that can't be cut. Good on you. Misty. Good luck next time. And then we've got show and tell. Yeah, what you do with your, with your, with your show and tell is um, you get a denture cleaning tablet, stir it, poly this. 
irritant and polygen. Yep, yep, yeah, we got some. Jar. Glass jar, yeah. Uh, hot water. Yeah. And soak it for 24 hours. We've got syrup. We sure have, yep. I got it for cleaning my water bottles. Okay. Um, yes, yeah, as long as it's a tablet. Oh no, this yep. is a paste. Then, How's the paste. No, no, it's not the paste. Yep. Um, Soak it for 24 hours, give it a shake every now and then, get a fine kitchen sieve, wash them off. When they're dry, you can stick it in vials like that with dry or loose or with glycerin. No. Yeah, I won't believe it. Yeah, day two, and we're back at the Fossil King place for emeralds and sapphires. This girl is addicted. Look, I think there's oh, just a couple here. Not as busy this morning, but we got here earlier even. <laughs> so uh, I better not dilly dally here and go and give her a hand um, sorting them all out. It's a few dropping into the old container. Give it a go. This old girl's done a bit of a dash, but I'm sure. You never know, it might be on the road in a few years time. <laughs> Look at that, it's even got the motor still in it. So, nice little town, you've done a nice job getting the old atmosphere right. Whilst having our cup of coffee. A couple of interesting little signboards. Children left unattended will be sold to the circus. <laughs> and go and see how Jude's getting on. She's doing our last bucket. Oh, that's pretty. Oh dear, here we are, 35.7. Oh, no. High five. High <laughs> five. Some people come to Miner's Cottage gem seeking for the, uh, for the emeralds, the rubies, the sapphires. I come for the scones and they're yummy. However, Jude's done well and she's got this lovely 35 plus carrot. Um, what was it, yellow? It's a green. A green cutter. Beautiful. She's been very successful. We are in a fabulous pub here. I think it's the Royal Tavern or something like that in Ruby Vale. It's won three years in a row um, Best Bush Pub. And you can see why. I'll pass it. Up here we got, well there's a Kiwi for a start, good on you. Saf Smithy's Sapphire Shovel. There's a leaf right there with a bend on it. Dolly's Rocker. Up top there we've got a um, uh, Heather's Harley. Yeah, I love the, uh, the hammer up there with the chain in the middle. There's a dog carrier up there by the vent. So yeah, it's a, it's a, what is it? It's a log cabin, isn't it, as well? I don't think it, it might be a genuine log cabin because you, you can see gaps in there, but beautiful pub, good value for money. Cheers, good. Here's to Ruby Val. Cheers. <laughs> Love it. Mmm. Oh, cold. You've been working hard. We earned that one. Literally just meters down the road, come across another one. This is Bobby Dazzler's. This, this one's got an underground tour. I might go and see what uh, that might be all about. And there's some more fossicking can be done up the hill. You got a name? <laughs> Blackie. Oh, it's a Blackie, is it? Oh, that's pretty here. Yes. Uh, friend of yours. It's <laughs> a girl. How's this? Maggie having a drink. Okay. Looking for the museum. And yeah, there's all these little claims around the place. Sorry for me breathing. But yeah, all these little markers. 
they're um, marking this their claims, the corners of each claim. So there's little trommels and conveyor belts. These guys could be underground. But yeah, keep going. Very interesting little walk. Let's just hope Google doesn't throw me off. So we're outside one claim here. Is that a Hilux? Yeah, trusty Hilux sitting there. The old truck is down that way, got a Hilux up here. He's down there digging away. He'll throw it into a, a bucket, a big bucket. Probably looks to be about, probably about 40, 50 kilos worth of stuff. And then come up that conveyor belt and tip into the that, uh, rotating drum. And it will sort out the fines. Uh, the big rocks and grade it and sort it out later. There we go, Let's see if we get a bucket coming up. Oh, look, there it is. So, somebody's down there picking away. Might be with a, uh, either a, uh, jackhammers, a couple of picks. He's loaded it up, send it to the top. There we go. Yeah, how cool is this? That truck probably gave up about 20 or 30 years ago. Probably still drivable. Don't know. It. Poor old thing's not getting a break. <laughs> it's incredible. These are the spots. These people probably will come here for 12 months or 6 months a year and work like crazy. It's awesome. So at the Miner's Heritage, you've got a Fossa King spot, you've got a bit of a old machinery laying around, plenty of parking, and you've got your shop over in that area, and you've got uh, tea, coffees and things over in the distance there behind me. So here at Miner's Heritage Park, you've got a Fossa King area. Where we've already been, some old machinery laying around, plenty of parking for your cars and your caravans, coffee shop in the distance over there, toilets and the shop itself. Here's these apostle birds. Look at them. All traveling, traveling in a posse. Coming on quite, quite close to me too. What's up? What are you doing? What's the matter? What's all the noise? What are you doing? Are you guys behaving yourself? You look like you're going to sneak up behind me, aren't you? That's what you're doing. Sneaking up behind me. Or just minding your own business. Okay. They're all running the muck. What? No good, you got. You guys are all up to no good. Yeah, we're just walking back from the museum and the tour up the road and uh, come past this place on the way back to our uh, accommodation. Yeah, it's an accommodation outlet you can come and stay at, and I think if you are guests here, you can then go and do observatory. So the night sky here would be fabulous. So, yeah, look into it. It was Ruby Vale Motel. Done and dusted out of uh, Ruby Vale. That's about 5Ks up the road. We'd come down through uh, Sapphire. I was just parked here in the sun just to get that awning a little bit dry before I pack it away. We've got the uh, Sapphire fuel station and tourist park there. Scrolling right on through. 
like a mine site there but Jude just happens to get another market out of her system this one is the Sapphire Markets she's in there having a look so we'll go and find her yeah not a bad little market managed to rescue Jude there's about 44 stalls in there food obviously lots of uh, gems produce and uh, brick and brack and some craft not far down the road from leaving Rubyville and Sapphireville just, just over 40 k's we come up to a place um, I'm not the best at pronouncing names you'll notice um, Bogan Tanyan we'll call it um, and it's got a bit of a museum here and I believe it's got something to do with a uh, rail disaster and I've stopped because it's got a bit of a familiarization with Back in New Zealand, um, a certain rail disaster as well. So we'll see if we'll find some more information out about it. So yeah, <laughs> a cute little dunny in the background. And here is a the, the station and the train track running through here. So yeah, just some quick information there. The railway disaster history. So um, it looks like it's around about the 26th of February, 1960. The Midlander was travelling and uh, there was a, uh, a bridge that got washed out and um, it ended up in the, uh, in the creek. Um, I do know that seven people were killed, three crew and four passengers. There was 43 others that were injured. So yeah, and, and the, the reason I've stopped here is that it... Uh, it resembles a lot of the Tangiwai disaster back uh, in New Zealand. Uh, there was a lahar down from the volcano that washed out a bridge. Um, a lot more people lost their life. Yeah, uh, <laughs> I think it was 120 or something. That was back in 1953. Yeah, so there you go. 1954 it's been running. Uh, there was a train that took 24 hours to complete the journey. Fire Winton Longreach. Yeah, there's a flood that dis dislodged uh, a pylon. And there's the people that passed away that have been remembered. Yeah, we've just driven 120 k's from Ruby Vale. We've uh, been through that uh, train disaster area and uh, the next stop, a uh, little town here of Alpha. Nice little spot. Great windmill out the background there, and uh, the town centre straight up the street, business centre, and this big large barbed wire bull, I believe, and a bull shaped very nice, looks very good, made with barbed wire. What do you know? Recycling at its best. A lady cow with a baby cow. Beautiful windmill, getting a good workout today. There is a nice bit of a breeze around. So yeah, I think the Southern Cross stands for the, the model of windmill, I believe. So yeah, moving on. <laughs> 